Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to the AME Food Testing Show. Today's topic, comparison of the food microbiological testing markets in the U.S. and EU with Thomas Wessler, MBA. Since founding his company in 1996, Strategic Consulting has become the leading knowledge resource for strategy and tactics in industrial diagnostics. With over 50 years of combined experience in business management, they have walked in the shoes of food manufacturers and instrumentation companies faced with the same challenges and have been very successful. Their pragmatic, action-oriented approach to corporate strategy, business development, and market research is built on critical understandings of the marketplace, technology, and competition. With a list of over 200 clients, including major companies in industry, as well as new entrants and financial institutions involved in the field of instrumentation and food safety. His specialties are business strategy, market research, mergers and acquisitions, mentoring, and other business interests of his clients. Mr. Wessler received his MBA from Harvard University. Now, welcome with me, Tom Wessler. Tom? Hello, Andy. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Would you like to update us on anything other than your introduction that I missed? I was, it was a very impressive introduction. Thanks very much. It's humbling. Uh, maybe the reason I have so many gray hairs is because of the years I've spent in this industry. Uh, no, I think you did a very good job. Well, Tom, we're very excited to have you here today for our listeners of food production, food quality, food safety, and food security managers in the U.S. and worldwide. Let's start off with a basic question. What are the basic food microbiological tests that are available in the market? Sure. Um, let me offer a little um, precursor, a little step back before we go directly into your question. Uh, strategic consulting uh, produces market reports, market research reports used by, for example, the diagnostic companies that manufacture the salmonella tests or the listeria tests or the total bacteria tests used by the food industries worldwide. We publish these market reports so that we can provide metrics on how big is the market, who's doing what testing, what methods are being used. Uh, to gather the information used in our reports, we conduct an extensive number of primary market research interviews, and maybe many of the listeners have helped us in pulling this information together. Um, we recently published a market report called uh, food Microbiology 7th Edition, which is the comparison of testing uh, between the United States and Europe. So in, in producing that report, we conducted in the neighborhood of 350 to 400 telephone interviews. And these interviews typically range 20 to 30 minutes, and there are a multitude of questions asked. So. Back to your question about the basic uh, microbiology tests, uh, just to look at this first on a worldwide basis, there are 750 micro food microbiology tests being done throughout the world annually. This number has been growing. Um, our information indicates there are approximately 40,000 food plants throughout the world that have greater than 25 employees, and these are the target uh, plant size uh, that we use to quantify the 750 million test volume. So within those 750 million tests, 80% of the tests are for routine uh, organisms, uh, call them indicator tests, and this would include total bacteria tests, tests for coliform and E. coli, tests for yeast and mold. So these types of tests represent 
approximately 80% of all of the tests being done worldwide. Slight variations geographically, but still a pretty good guesstimate. The remaining 20% of the tests are for uh, the specific organism tests for pathogens. So this remaining 20% or approximately 150 million tests are for the pathogens, salmonella, listeria, and so on. Very good. What is the market for these tests within the United States alone? Sure. The um, Just for the audience, if anyone in the audience has interest, we published a, um, um, a poster at uh, the American Society for Microbiology uh, this past year, a poster that provides you know, some overview metrics uh, that might be of interest to the readers. And so if they would go to our website, which is www.strategic-consult.com, uh, we'd be happy to provide them with a copy of our presentation. Um, but to answer your question specifically, in the United States, uh, there was a total of approximately 210 million microbiology tests, uh, while in Europe, there were 275 million total microbiology tests. So Europe represents a larger total market for uh, based on test volume than the U.S. market uh, when, when looking at this over the past year. Excellent. Tom, we realize that you were just giving us a broad brush stroke of the potential information that you offer in your reports. I'm not asking you to divulge any of that, but just to give us a peek into the extensive research you performed. What's the market for the tests? in the European Union, and I think you just mentioned 230 million, but is it different than the tests offered in the United States? So there are, uh, so yes, in the European Union, and again, uh, we did an extensive amount of interviewing to gather this, uh, uh, this number and this information. Uh, the total test volume in uh, the EU this past year was 275 million. The we do see some distinctions between uh, the U.S. and uh, Europe, uh, and that was the important, uh, those are some of the insights contained in the report. And yes, I'm not going to offer all the particulars, but I am happy to share kind of just some flavor of the differences uh, that exist. Um, first of all, just to kind of state, uh, the, the quality of food in Europe and the quality of food in the United States is both excellent. Uh, we can find uh, certainly there are recalls and certainly there are issues, but just in general when you look versus other geographies, the quality of food and the starting point for both the U.S. and the EU is very high. Uh, if you actually look at the testing uh, that is being done there is more testing being done in the EU. Uh, that's true, but uh, the EU also serves a larger population. So when comparing the amount of testing uh, versus population, the two geographies are quite similar. Uh, when you look at the two geographies in terms of uh, uh, the breakdown between routine testing and pathogen testing, they're both quite similar, a little bit higher percentage of pathogen testing in the U.S., uh, more in the range of 22% uh, of all tests in the U.S. Uh, are pathogens versus Europe, where it's more in the 18 to 19%. So not significant, but still a little bit higher percentage of all tests. One other point to mention is that when you start to dig a little bit deeper into the types of routine tests that are being done in the geography uh, between the U.S. and Europe, 
Uh, again, there's quite a bit of similarity. The leading routine test that's being done is for total bacteria, and this ranges approximately 35% uh, of all of the routine tests in the geographies are done for total bacteria. The next parameter in terms of volume would be for the combined coliform E. coli tests, and then this would be followed by yeast and mold tests and then some other parameters. And then finally, to round out the routine uh, testing, uh, there's also in the range of 3 to 5 percent of all the routine tests are done for ATP surface hygiene. So that, there's relative similarity between the two geographies as relates to uh, uh, routine testing. And just to follow this point one more step, when you look at the pathogens being done in the two geographies, uh, the leading pathogen uh, for both geographies is Salmonella and then followed by Listeria and Listeria monocytogenes, and then finally followed by pathogenic E. coli, and with a very small percentage being done for uh, Campylobacter. So there are a number of important similarities between the two geographies. They both represent very significant market opportunities for food diagnostic manufacturers. Very good, Tom. Your broad brush reporting, I think, would be very helpful to the majority of our thousands of food production managers, food quality and safety and security managers. What are their expected trends? And when you address that, I guess worldwide first, and then specifically for the United States, and there's a lot of apprehension right now about the Food Safety Modernization Act, if you can kind of play how that would work in a very broad way so that we can entice people to buy your report. <laughs> Always interested in that. Um, but maybe, again, let me hold that for a second, Andy, and then just insert one other uh, point of difference that I think is critical uh, before we get to the trends for each of the geographies. An important difference between the two geographies relates to the methods that are being used to analyze uh, the organisms. In the United States for routine testing, there is a much higher use of what is commonly referred to as rapid methods or convenience methods, a much higher use in the U.S., for example, of products like Petri film. Um, for many, you know, which is a convenience uh, type test, whereas in Europe, a much higher reliance on more the traditional methods. So we find some important differences between the two geographies as it relates to the routine methods used, and then this is even more pronounced when we look at the pathogen methods being used. In Europe, there, is also, there continues to be this high reliance on more what are called the traditional methods, whereas in the United States, a higher percentage of pathogen tests are done using antibody-based methods or molecular methods. So we do see that even though the testing volume somewhat tracks between the two geographies, and that the breakdown of organism testing tracks between the two geographies, the methods used are you know, dramatically different. Having said that, talking a little bit more about trends, what we do know is that testing has been increasing more rapidly in the United States than it has been in Europe. And then that then makes you ask the question, what are the drivers to that testing that's occurring in the United States? In the U.S., it's not all being driven by new regulation like FSMA. It's being driven on a number of factors. Um, as, as we all know, the um, newspapers, um, all of the Internet is very frequently addressing uh, issues of food recalls. This creates 
to an extent, almost a hypersensitivity to the public about the quality of the food, the safety of the food that they are consuming. With that, it causes food production companies, food companies to be very proactive, uh, do a number of things to improve their processes, improve training, uh, but also uh, increase um, use of testing uh, as a way to help make sure that they're meeting label claims and producing safe food. So we have this proactive uh, effort by the food companies. We also have increases in demand by food retailers and food service companies. So the Costco's, the Walmarts, or any of the folks buying the product produced by the food companies are also increasing their expectations which is driving more testing. And then finally, we are getting uh, regulations which are both changing kind of the nature of where we test, when we test, and how much we test. So there are a number of factors all coalescing to drive an increase in testing demand in the United States. In Europe, they also, as we said, have very safe food um, but the, um, this hyperactivity is not as present in Europe as it is in the United States. As a result, uh, the public in Europe have a higher confidence level in uh, the food that's being produced or that they're consuming, and as a result, there isn't this underlying drive for uh, the same levels of increases in testing that is seen in the United States. Very good. Do you have any, again, very broad gross predictions for the near term as far as the growth or decline of testing in the U.S.? In the U.S. or in both? Why don't I address both? Uh, both. Let's do both and then globally. Okay. I think that uh, in Europe there continues to be this uh, this growth in testing, which is in the mid-single-digit range, uh, both for routine as well as pathogen testing. In, um, in the United States, um, there has been over the last three to five years an increase in routine organism testing um, at a little bit higher rate than in Europe. Um, but what has been most dramatic in relative to the last three to four years has been the increase in uh, pathogen testing in the United States, uh, which has moved into uh, double-digit growth rates. I would see that, in fact, in the United States, the sense that I'm getting, uh, because frankly we're currently doing research for another report, and so we're actively at this point interviewing, and the, the sense that I'm getting is that the United States uh, food companies have taken and have become quite proactive and have increased testing volumes uh, reasonably dramatically that we might be finding, not that it's going to level off in terms of volume, but that's, that the growth rates over the next few years might not be as aggressive as they have been over the past three to four years. Very good, Tom. We appreciate your time and the energy you've given to us. And we allow you at this point to offer essentially an advertisement about your firm's capabilities, your reports that you provide, and other consulting services. Well, <laughs> I'll start off by saying thank you. Uh, thanks to any of you who are listening uh, that are willing to uh, participate as we survey the food companies, the, the quality control, quality assurance managers at the food plants, the information, the willingness that they take to take some time out of their day uh, to answer the questions is tremendously appreciated, not just because we can accumulate it and produce the reports, but more importantly that this information can be consolidated and then shared with folks that are developing the new test methods and trying to come up with ways to improve uh, the testing that's currently being done. So a big thank you to all that do help in that regard. I would, um, you know, the advertorial is uh, please visit our website. Again, it's at uh, www. 
uh, strategic consult.com, uh, please visit the website. Please understand some of the consulting services that, uh, that the company provides. We're well experienced in this industry. Um, our clients include, as you've indicated, Andy, uh, all the leading competitors on a worldwide basis, all the diagnostic companies. And so we have extensive uh, knowledge of the test methods, the markets, uh, and um, in essence the playing field that's here. So it can be of good guidance there. And also please all of you visit the website, take a look at our market research reports. Uh, they represent a labor of love uh, and written by some folks um, in the company that have uh, lived this experience, understand the markets, and so we try to put together a very credible and easy to read but very rich in value uh, reports. So with that, I say thank you. Thank you, Tom, for your time, and I allow you at this point to conclude with any other remarks that you may wish to express. I would like to say that uh, your reports have been comprehensive and your consultations as I've been uh, engaged with you have been very professional and very competent. Excellent, Andy. Thank you. One other thing I guess I should just say is that the telephone number is 802-457-9933. Uh, we're located in lovely uh, Vermont snowing outside, and we encourage you to all come up and visit and, uh, uh, and see us. But otherwise, thanks all for your time. Thank you very much, Tom. Look forward to having you contribute in the future should you have any other reports which would be of interest to our thousands of food production, food quality, food safety, and food security managers. And wish you a good day. Well, thank you, Andy. Thanks for the time. Bye now. Yeah. Bye now.